For the auto cycle, we are trying to adapt a spark ignition internal combustion reciprocating engine into an idealized model. And we'll start by considering the four strokes of a four stroke engine. This is going to be the best drawing ever, by the way. Okay, imagine I have two valves here one for intake, one for exhaust. And for the beginning of my process here, the exhaust valve is closed, the intake valve is open, and the piston is moving down. So from top dead center to bottom dead center, we are calling this the intake stroke. Then, then we are sealing the cylinder, that is, both valves are in the closed position, and we move the piston up. This is compressing the gas, and the gas here is referring to the air that's in the engine and also the fuel because the fuel was mixed with the air prior to intake to the cylinder. This is the compression stroke. Then we are producing power. So at the very top dead center, disclaimer here, it's not actually top dead center, but we're modeling it in an ideal way. At top dead center-ish, that spark plug fires, which ignites the fuel, and we are assuming in our auto cycle that that combustion happens instantly. So quickly, in fact, that the piston doesn't have a chance to move. And then as a result of now being hot, the air is going to push against the piston and move it down. That's our power stroke. Lastly, the exhaust valve is going to open the piston will move up, and we will get all of that gas, at least some of it, out so that we can intake again. Make sense? So those four strokes are intake, compression, power, exhaust. In my gas-powered engine in my car, these are re repeated over and over and over again. In a two-stroke engine, you are actually using both sides of the piston, so while it's going down, it is also compressing the area underneath the piston. In this four-stroke discussion, we are talking about the gas being on this side only. So intake brings in an air-fuel mixture, compression compresses the air-fuel mixture, then between compression and power, the spark plug fires, combusting all the fuel instantaneously for the purposes of our analysis, then that hot mixture of air and whatever products are left after combustion push against the piston, moving it down, producing some power, and then we are moving the piston back up to exhaust that mixture of air and exhaust gases so that we can bring in a fresh air fuel mixture again. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Our auto cycle is going to start by ignoring intake and exhaust altogether. We are focusing only on compression and power. And in fact, we are going to break it up into pieces to make it a little bit easier to model. Our auto cycle begins with just compression. And then we have a process where we will analyze the heat addition caused by the combustion. And then we'll have a process where we have expansion and produce power. And then we'll have a process that completes the loop. We have compression, we have combustion, we have expansion. And then we have the hypothetical process that encompasses the exhaust, the cooling, and the reintake. So we're calling this the cooling process, or heat rejection if you prefer. And in the combustion process, the piston doesn't move. We just have, you know, fire here, which we are treating as being external heat addition. In the expansion process, we have work out. And then in our cooling process, we are assuming that the 
The exhaust gases get exhausted. They are allowed to mingle with the atmosphere long enough to cool back down to their initial conditions. And we bring them back in, and all of that happens for free instantly. So the combustion process is isochoric. The cooling process is isochoric. They are considered to be isochoric because they happen very, very quickly. So quickly that the piston doesn't have a chance to move. For our compression and expansion processes, we are assuming that those happen as ideally as possible. And ideal compression and expansion is modeled as being isentropic. Therefore, the four processes of our auto cycle are as follows. 1 to 2 is isentropic compression. 2 to 3 is isochoric heat addition. 3 to 4 is isentropic expansion. And then 4 to 1 is isochoric heat rejection. And the relevant parameters to the auto cycle are displaced volume, compression ratio, and the number of cylinders, which I'll abbreviate as N. Lastly, because the auto cycle only occupies half of what the piston cylinder arrangement is actually doing, if you are calculating the power output of an actual engine, let's say one that is operating at 2000 RPM, then you only get 1000 auto cycles per minute. Does that make sense? Because there's an auto cycle happening and then there's the quote, waste of time, unquote, while you are exhausting the gases, bringing in fresh gases, and then you have another auto cycle. So in a 2000 RPM R engine, you're only getting 1000 auto cycles. What that means is if you're calculating a power output, you would take your mass inside the engine multiplied by your specific network out, that would give you number of kilojoules, or amount of energy, per auto cycle. Then you would multiply by the number of auto cycles per time unit. So if we imagine that we were working this in kilojoules per kilogram, and we multiplied by a number of kilograms, then we would multiply by rotational speed, let's say 2000 RPMs. And then we would multiply by one auto cycle per two revolutions. And the way that this works is because the energy that you get over here is per auto cycle. So auto cycle and auto cycle cancel. This would give you power output. So I'm, I realize I'm mixing symbols here with numbers. Let's try an actual example. Say that you had an engine that was, oh, 2000 RPM had four cylinders. Each cylinder had 0 0.5 kilograms of air. And each auto cycle was producing 400 kilojoules per kilogram. That's net work out. Then you would take 0 0.5 kilograms per cycle times the number of cycles times the specific net work out. That's 400 kilojoules per kilogram. And then you multiply by 2,000 revolutions per minute. And then, and then you multiply by one auto cycle for two revolutions. And you remember that this 400 kilojoules per kilogram is per auto cycle. And you're left with kilojoules per minute. So if you multiply by one minute is 60 seconds, you would get kilojoules per second, which is a kilowatt. Calculating the power output of a reciprocating engine is easiest to do if you just piece together what you know. Don't think of it as a single equation.